encouraged. encouraged. Say it to yourself, though. Say it to yourself like you're telling yourself something. Be encouraged. Um, Listen to Sherry share praise reports. Um, I love to hear your praise reports. Um, I'm working very, very diligently in this time in terms of believing to not to have reports. I don't want to have praise reports. I want to have a praise lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah, I just want a lifestyle of it. You know what I'm saying? I just, just let it be just the way my life flows. This is, it is every day. If the mercies are new every morning, then I doggone it. I'm, I got a, a storehouse of mercy somewhere that I need to take advantage of. <laughs> Come, you got a lot of mornings that you ain't get the mercies. You need to go, go, you need to go dig, in there, d- dig in your account and see what you have. So uh, I figured I'd start the message with this before I go forward. So from business, especially to the entertainment side of things, um, I've been expecting since this year started whole, totally different. I said a year of excellence, everything will go well. You guys have me speaking the word over Mike. You have heard me. No, this is it. No more extra stuff. It's time for you to land. And I told him he's getting a motion picture this year. That, that was the, my confession. Yeah. That's quite without question. The extras are nice, but no, we need you talking and we need you, that nice deep voice you need to be. <laughs> so Friday he shot Law and Order as a detective, speaking part. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Excited about that. Um, now I'm waiting for the motion picture because it looks like when I say it, Daddy hears it, or I hear Daddy, and I say it, and he agrees, and it happens. And so it's time. So God spoke to me about my own expectation. For me, everything has been going well since this year started, you know, especially with the Nama stuff. Just everything has been coming together, 1130, coming together, 1130 artists, everything, everything we touch 1130s about success and prosperity and, and an increase in the wisdom and the move of God in our lives. That's what we're about. You know, that's it. we're a movement. It's not my company. It's everybody involved. It's a movement. And um, God spoke to me. I was sharing it with us upstairs. God spoke to me. He said, you know, whenever you bought a house or, or to flip or to live in or whatever, or you did construction, and in my house, I did major construction. You know, how many of you watched the Flip the House or Love It or List It, all those those shows, right? Every single episode, and I've heard it all my life through contractors, something always comes up. There's always that hidden course that they didn't expect, the delay in time, we thought it would be three months, it looked like it's gonna be six. We thought it was going to be 50,000. Well, it looks like it's going to be 70. Is, you know, well, well, we can fix that, but now you got to give up the kitchen. You can't have the kitchen now because the money that we thought was going to go to your kitchen now has to go to here. And in every situation with every house I have or worked on or have had and flipped, never has that been the case. My confession going in was, no, I will pay less than what I planned and I will finish on time. And my, my mindset has always, this building, even prospect, we set a timeline that we would be in and ready to go, and it was done. And God began to show me, you have that expectation when it comes to real estate, but what about the other businesses and things I called you to? Why do you expect, yeah, it's going to be, well, I have to just be strong and put up with it, and you just have to go through it. God said, why aren't you expecting that same spirit of excellence and ease on everything you do. See, the great thing about when God speaks a word to all your feet draggers, I don't say, well, amen, I receive it. You know, in time, God going to show me the way and it's going to work out. It's like, once you say it, God said, light be, and the sun popped up in the sky. Well, then all my little crap gets fixed just like that. God said, you shouldn't expect problems. I say, amen. And that's it. 
I don't expect it. I expect from this point everything to continue to go smooth and perfect and problem-free, and it's happening. But it was happening before I confessed it, but then God made me realize there's a still an expectation inside of you bracing for impact. I need you to stop doing that. I know this goes to somebody in here. I need you to stop, like, even when I'm blessing you, looking for the devil to show up. I want to just look for God. If I see the devil, I want to see him pass and go, what's up, punk? You know where you belong. Stay over there. Come over here if you want to. It's an attitude. It's an attitude. We allow the enemy to slip his mess into God's move so much that we expect that to be the normal. But it doesn't have to be. Now, with that said, let's pick up where we left off last week, but I first have to cover that again because I laid some points out. Now, how many of you remember the points? Okay, one, two, two people remember them? Three people, four, okay, good. How many points were there? See, yeah, thank you, my babies. I love you. I love you. Here we go. Joshua chapter 1. After the death of, the Mo of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead now. I mean, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, you, now and then you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan into the land I'm about to give them. To the Israelites, I will give you every place where you should set the sole of your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river Euphrates and all the Hittite country and the Mediterranean Sea in the west. Then that's where we stopped. Now, so let's go over point one. What was point number one? Huh? Newness. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. He wasn't telling Joshua something he didn't know. He was telling Joshua something that he needed to acknowledge. What Moses was and what me and Moses had is not the issue here. I'm now establishing something with you. I'm now leading you. Don't come to me with the Moses stuff. This is a new day and a new revelation. We're going in. You cannot continue to try to follow God with yesterday's revelation. Yesterday's deliverance, yesterday's healing. I remember I had this and God healed me. Okay, well, what do you believe in to be healed from now? Well, we're not talking about that. What do you need to get now to receive what God's doing today? Let me say that one more time. What do we need to get now to do what God is doing today? You listening? So Moses is dead. He makes the point. You want to hear all the details about it? Go listen to last week's message. I covered it. What was the second point? Direction. Now he says, I'm going to give you a new direction. We're going in now, and we're not going in with the direction of Moses. We're going in with the direction I'm giving you. Why would it be important to not to make sure he understands that Moses is dead? I talked about it last week. Let's see if you remember. And to, and to share to him, now I'm giving a new direction to you, Joshua. Why would that be important? No takers? Yes, Nelly. So he, that's, that's a very important one. He doesn't want Joshua comparing himself to Moses. You should always be comparing yourself to God. Got it? You don't look at the last leader. You look at the direction God's giving you. Give me another reason. There are several. That's it? Yes, Lindsay. Same thing. So he won't do the same. He won't follow. It's pretty much the same thing said differently. What about this? I won't keep you on the string too long. How did Moses' end turn out? He didn't make it in. Maybe you might not want to follow him. <laughs> With all due respect, maybe you might not want to do it that way. And God always talks about him. Moses was a great man, wonderful man, beautiful man, powerful man. Moses, they talk about the law of Moses forever and ever and ever. 
but he didn't make it in. I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to be Moses Jr. You follow me? Be very careful who you set your goals after. I remember when everybody wanted to be Suge Knight. How many do now? now I'm not trying to diss them. I'm just trying to make a point. Let, let, let's get off of Suge. I remember when everybody wanted to be Bill Cosby. <laughs> I knew a lot of people that wanted to be Harvey Weinberger, or whatever his name is. <laughs> You get my point? <laughs> great people with great callings and great anointings that made turns that wound up disgraced. Moses was a great man. I'm not comparing him to Moses by a long shot. My point is, okay, honor them for the great things, but you don't want to be them. You want to be the best you, not an imitation them. You got that? What was the next point? God took them back to his promise. He said, after 40 years, I still remember in detail what I promised you. And he had, and remember, I said this last week, he had to reaffirm the promise to the only two people that were old enough to remember it. Remember? They left them in the wilderness for 40 years so their families all died off so that only the younger generation could go in. So the only two seniors in the bunch at that point was Joshua and Caleb. Everybody else was under 40. I asked a question last week. I said, you know, I sat there, I read that story, and you laughed, but it's still true. I kept saying, so wait a minute, on year 40, was there like a massive funeral? Because everybody had to die. <laughs> Whoever was left had to cry. If they didn't, you, 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 you got to really think about that in your brain, right? 40 years, he said everybody would be gone, and the young generation would go in. Well, back then, people lived hundreds of years. <laughs> So that means there was a lot of people had to just drop off young. So during the course of that 40 years, people was dropping. But I'm figuring they must have been looking at the clock like, oh, you're all out of here in a couple of days. Oh Hug your mom and dad because they're going to be gone tomorrow. It's year 40. See, it don't explain that. But how do you get rid of a generation of people who live for hundreds of years in just 40 years? So I made the comment, God could have just said, okay, you're all out, and just wiped them out at that, on the very first day that they disobeyed. But then Joshua and Caleb have been stuck raising everybody's kids. So they had to keep them around. They served a purpose. <laughs> yeah, well, it may sound crazy, but you come give me a better solution, I'll go with yours. It's facts. So now here we are with the generation of people who don't know this promise like Joshua and Caleb do. They know stories maybe. They maybe have heard things. You know, God said in 40 years, blah, 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 blah. Well, let me ask you something. How many of you get through 10 years successfully holding on to a promise? They probably think, yeah, whatever. Yeah, 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 I know 40 years, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, 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 I know the promise is 40 years, yeah. Yeah, everybody's going to die in 40 years, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. And then they came in the room one day, it was like, Mom and Dad's gone, right? <laughs> <laughs> so here's the point. Now they had to bring a group of people in who didn't know the promise firsthand. We're not talking about a bunch of 40-year-olds. Please don't think that. 40 years for them to die, I'm sure they didn't say, well, we're going to have one baby, and we're just going to hold on to this one baby for 40 years. They 40 years old. They got kids. You was considered a man at, what, 13? They was marrying and stuff at 15, 16. 
By the time they got 40, they had probably kids and grandkids. See, I try to make people look at stuff, looking at the Bible as this comic book. This is real people. And back then, big families and making babies, you wasn't, you wasn't a blessed woman if you didn't have 15 kids. <laughs> well, 15 may be big, but it, the numbers was like that. And if you get Shem and Ham and Lim and Tim and Rim and Kent, Zim, they, they had all these babies, right? This is, you read the stories. They had all these. Come on, that's what they did. And it's supposed to be a lot of boys. You wasn't a blessed woman if you wasn't punching out boys. You had to knock out boys, like a lot of boys. They pray for boy anointed. So here we have it. They got these kids who are now not kids but adults and all the generations beneath. This is a whole new generation. And they don't know all of, this gen all of these generations don't know firsthand this promise. So now Joshua has to come to a people who've been following Moses round and round and round and round and round the mountain. Why are we going in? Ask your parents. <laughs> just, just, keep, just, keep walking, just, just keep walking around. Ask your parents. Just, just, just go ask your parents. <laughs> so here we are. God comes back and says, remember that promise I made 40 years ago? Well, I do. You missed that. Remember that promise I made you 10 years ago? Well, I do. Remember all the great things I spoke over you in dreams and visions? That you've never done anything to go toward? Well, I do. And if you're ready now, and if you're obedient, I'm going to take you there. Three people got that. Three people received that. Three people let that touch their heart. Say, even if I don't remember. Say it, even if I don't remember. God, you do. You remember promises God spoke over you? Any of you remember? Yes? He does too. And he remembers it the way he originally said it, not the stuff you let people talk you out of by telling you, well, you got to have wisdom, well, you know you're getting old, well, you know you ain't got enough degrees for that, and all the stuff that people told you to, to make you believe you can't have that, or time itself just convinced you you can't have it. God remembers it. Forty years later, and the promise is as fresh to God as it was then because he starts describing the land and all the cities and stuff. God didn't say, yeah, well, you know, you're older now, so you don't need all them cities. Just take the first couple and that's good. <laughs> Room with each other. Y'all got plenty of space. <laughs> all y'all live in one apartment. You know how to do it. You know they, they from over there. You'll catch it later. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anyway, my point is, God said this promise is exactly the same as it was. There's one more thing that I skipped in the points that I'm going to go back to and cover quickly as we move on. How many of you are learning something so far? Okay. Verse 2, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people... What? What's that? What does it say in the King James? Does anybody know? For get ready. Arise and? Okay, so now he's saying two things then are being explained in that statement. Get ready was originally... It said to be arise. Get ready is being used as a synonym to arise. Listen to me. How many of you associate the word get ready with arise? Hmm, you don't. 
So what's being said here that's a little different from your impression of get ready? Anybody want to volunteer an answer? Okay, somebody said, mm-mm. Mm-mm, no, not at all. Okay, I guess I'll just go straight ahead and explain then. Most church people get ready through prayer. There's no arising and going forward. It's sitting and praying and waiting on the Lord. Right? That's what you mean by get ready. Well, I'm just getting ready. I'm ready, with, I'm ready for the Lord to move. You are? Yeah? You are? Yeah. And when he says move, what are you moving in? What do you mean? You got a van. You got a car. You got your stuff packed. Is it in boxes? Did you contact people that's going to help you move? So, so how are you getting ready? I've been seeking the Lord in prayer. Okay, you... Get ready means arise. At least head aim toward the door. Start walking toward it slowly with your bags in your hands. There should be some kind of movement in the direction that you believe that God has called you to go. Prepare. Arise. Get ready. It's an action statement. Faith without works is dead. For if you say you have faith without works, show me those, he said. And I'll show you my faith by my works. My faith is spoken not in the things I say to you, even though you'll hear me say confessions. The actions I take to go in the direction that God told me to go is what proves my faith, not my statement. I just believe in Jesus' name. You believe what? I believe I'm healed. What are you doing in the direction of being healed? What do you mean? What are you doing in the direction? I'm just trusting the Lord. What are you doing? What are you doing that is different from the sick you? You got a routine that you follow as the sick you. What are you doing to move in the direction of the healed you? Where's the arise? Fontaine, Pastor Fontaine, when he had born with asthma, Believed for years for his healing. It wasn't a lot of years, a couple of years. One day he said to me, Pop, I'm getting rid of my inhaler. My heart jumped. I'm like, you, I've seen him wheeze and go through that thing. You need that thing. I didn't say it to him. I ain't going to poop on his faith. But the natural inside of me, like, okay, this is a life or death decision he's making. And he got rid of it. And one day, he had trouble breathing. He told me it was late in the evening, and he was just trying to stand. But it was just too much for him. So he got up and decided, now, and this is interesting, you reason already not to take a cab, but to walk to the hospital. I'm just going to go there and get, just get me an inhaler just to get me through t- today. And on his walk, I don't know if you know, (laughs) but that man has not had asthma in decades. He don't carry inhalers no more. Because as he got up to go forward, so somebody else you don't know, a boy born with asthma. Saw him and said, well, if he can do it, then I'm going to throw my inhaler away. And she's been free from it for decades. So my question is, if you say that you believe, where is your arise? Son Shell, I was talking about you yesterday. You made the broke comment. I said, I don't speak broke. I don't know that word. That hits you like a bolt of lightning. I can tell from your tone. You were like, oh. Mm. And ever since then, I've been hearing you say that. I don't speak broke. I don't know what that even is. Like, I don't know. I, that, those words don't come out of my mouth. I bet you you less broke. 
I bet you probably ain't broke at all now, right? You don't have broke no more at all in your house, do you? See, it's all about the arise. It's not a ton of stuff you need to do in the natural, but you do need to take a stand in the direction you say is yours. I don't, I don't believe I, I have a cigarette habit anymore. Well, then why'd you just buy those three cottons? Because I know the Lord going to come and deliver me. Get rid of them. You know how much cigarettes cost? Okay, well, then stay with it. Something. Make a deposit. He said, arise. Get ready. Now, these people are being told in this process that as God is going to show you, so I would make that step two. Moses is dead. Two is arise now. Get up and begin to head or prepare yourself to go in the direction that you believe God is moving you. I'm believing for a new home. So what did I do with you, Nellie? I said, call some places. You didn't have the money yet. Call some places. Let's go look at apartments. We went looking at an apartment. She had no money for no apartment. But we obeyed. We looked at six different places. You still didn't have the money. I said, when will you have the money? You said, April. Okay, well, let's look now. When do you start looking? February? February. We look now. That's me making her get up and go. After she found a location that she was interested in in New Jersey, God gives me a word. I call Lindsay. Lindsay, you still in touch with your landlord? Mm-hmm. Call him and ask him, does he know of anything in that area? That's the area she wants to live in. She calls me, says, no, I don't have a place. I don't know of anything, but I'll let you know if anything comes up. Six days later, to be exact, he calls Lindsay and says, guess what? My house next door the tenant's leaving. He just announced he's leaving. She could come see it. I said to her, they ain't going to do you all those credit checks. They ain't going to put you through all that. You're not going to have to pay no broker's fee. You're not going to pay none of that stuff. We went there. She got her lease a couple of days ago. <laughs> when is she moving? April 1st, exactly. <laughs> That's when the person moves out. You, you, you see? But if she hadn't got up, and arise, and moved, nothing would change. Why sit here till we die, the leper said. Let's get up and head toward them. At least if we head in toward the priest, something could happen, and they got healed. Look at somebody and say, get up, get up. Arise. arise, go forward. Go forward. Amen. 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 Hmm. Hmm. See, I tell you these stories because I want you to see that this is real. This is not some fantasy stuff. To the world, it doesn't mean anything. Well, let me not say that because the world uses it better than we do. Let me take that back. They believe in the positive confession and speak it, believe it, receive it better than we do. <sighs> so here you go. I'm going to make a reference. Some of you are going to know what I'm not, not going to know what I'm talking about. Those of you who do, are going to understand it totally. Wilder, the boxer. Speak it, believe it, receive it. Speak it, believe it, receive it. Speak it, believe it. He said that all the time. He said he was going to be champion. He spoke it. He believed it. He received it. Until you got a Christian who spoke it. Now, <laughs> now the game changes. Because you're going to speak it, believe it, receive it. And he's saying, yeah, but I'm doing that, and I have Christ as my Savior, and you can't beat me. So now the game changes. And when he said to him, to, to Tyson Fury, well, I guess it's going to be your God versus my God, I went, oh, you shouldn't have done that. 
You shouldn't have done that. Because if all you got is speak it, believe it, receive it, and then he got the person who made up speak it, believe it, receive it. Ouch. 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 And I don't know who saw that fight, but that was a beating. That was a mad. He made him look like he shouldn't have even be, been in pro boxing at all. That was a spanking. And at the end of the fight, Tyson looked like he just went jogging or something. But if you see the interview when they were going back and forth, he said he started naming these ancestral spirits that had his back, uh, a wilder, and, and Tyson Fury was like, then there's no way you beating me. You got, you got ancestral spirits? You got spirits? He said, I serve the true spirit, Jesus. You, you, you gone. He just looked and said, there's no, look up that interview. He said, did you just say you got spirits? He said, He's like, okay, okay, I'm whipping your behind. You coming with spirits and alter egos and stuff? Your behind is getting whipped, and he was just, just that calm. I have a Messiah. You talking about, oh, this, he said, you just made this easy. Your behind is getting tore up. Now, here's what I'm saying to you. The world uses it. And it works. You have the creator of the saying, why isn't it working for you better? It should. I expect it to. But you have to arise. You have to get up and head somewhere. I did and it failed. Get up and head again. You may have to change direction just slightly. Step a little to the left and keep going or stand still and say, okay, God, I'm going. Guide me. I don't expect to run into to, to, to roadblocks anymore in my life. I expect it to happen. Now, let's move on with the next phase of this. So we're all up to speed, right? If you got something, give me a hearty amen. amen. This is good stuff. This, I'm practicing this as I'm preaching it in the proof. It's manifesting me on me on so many levels that my mind is blown. My life is phenomenal right now. I'm seeing things that I've never seen before, and I'm loving this new phase of my life. I'm in, the, like I said to you a couple of weeks ago, for a long time I was in Joshua mode, walking the land and preparing. I'm now in Caleb mode. I'm 80, see, I'm 85. I'm as strong then as I was, or even stronger when I was younger. Give me the most fortified cities. I'm ready to take my land. It's my time. I've helped so many people into their land, like Joshua did, like Caleb did. He's saying, but now it's my time. And it's all working. Here's why. He goes and he breaks it down. And you go into verse, what's that, uh, five. No, we're on five. No one should be able to stand against you all the days of your life. I love that. Read that with me. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Read it again. Say me when you read it next time and read it again. Stop. That's considering that you covered those first four steps. But there's a fifth one, and here it comes. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Don't ever think again that God ain't there, even if you messed up or made a mistake, because people start believing, well, maybe God let this happen because there's sin in my life. And maybe God let this happen because I didn't do this right. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you all the days of your life. Do what I said in them first four steps. I got you. Be strong and courageous. Step five. You got it? Because you will lead these people to inherit the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong. Be very courageous. 
Stop. In the King James, it says, only you must be strong and very courageous. This only works if you follow the steps and you're strong and courageous. Let's talk about being strong and courageous and what that means. Because saying be strong, is he talking about a physical strength now? What is he talking about? I'm sitting it out there for you. Think about it a minute. He's saying only be strong and very courageous. He's giving them an instruction that he needs them to follow to win at this. Only be strong and very courageous. What is he saying to them? What is he saying to Joshua? Go to the gym, work out, be strong. I want you to be diesel because if anybody kind of gets in your face, I want you to be able to knock them out so you can be an example to the, to the rest of them that they ain't to play with you like that. Right? No, of course not. He's not talking about physical strength. So what's he talking about? Okay. You, 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 really, you really think we're going to have a dialogue, bro? I, 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 say a sentence. Stop, 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 slow, 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 slow down, slow down, because they can't hear you over the mic. So you got to say one at a time, and I have to repeat you so that the people can hear how intelligent you are. Number one is what? Spiritually, Spiritually strong. Number two is what? Mentally. Mentally strong. Number three is what? Physically strong. Which one is he asking for? And we come to agreement. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> I, I, I'm not a novice at this, bro. <laughs> so here's the point. Your point is right. There are different forms of strength, but he's asking for something specific here. He's not asking him to be physically strong. He can't beat all of Israel. He's asking him to be strong in his focus. You caught? Come, come on. Come on. He's giving them an instruction, and he's saying, I need you to be strong, and I need you to be courageous. I need you to not faint under pressure. I need you to be spiritually strong, but I need you to be focused. I need you to be focused strong. I, I'm going to tell you something. I need you to hear what I'm saying, and I need you not to waver. Where is your biggest seat of strength? You name the three, where's the, what's the most powerful one? Spiritual strong. Where does spiritual strong come from? Spirit of God. Okay, so you have that already. You didn't hear what I just said. You have that. There's no stronger you can be spiritually if you have Christ and the Holy Spirit. Come on, you need to take, take breathe that one in. He's giving you all things that pertain to life and godliness. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The word is telling you all the time, when I am weak, it is then that he is strong because his strength is perfected in my weakness. So there's no stronger spiritually you can be. No study of scripture and anything else is going to make you spiritually stronger. So what's the next one? What did you say? Mentally. That's fortitude, and that's built to studying your word and standing on your word and deciding not to move no matter what happens. That's the human reaction. For faith without works is dead. So it becomes a situation where now your application is, are you listening? Are you listening? Your root requirement is just believing. I need to be stronger in this. All you need to do is stand. And if that's where you're weak, then that's what you practice. Did you hear me? Yeah. If that's where you're weak, then that's what you practice. When you got boxers or fighters, I did martial arts. They wanted physical strength. But I came to the realization through practice that there was something 
just as important, if not more, than physical strength. You know what that is? N that, no, not, not there. They, they tell you the mental strength's important. Endurance. Endurance, condition, it's endurance. You practice to be, you can be born strong. But somebody who has more endurance than you will beat you. Just stay away from you and let you wear yourself out for a couple of rounds and then just come and beat the living crap out of you. Yeah. Rumble in the jungle tells that story. Endurance. You ready? Get one scripture. For the race is not given. Or to the? It's not given to the swift or to the strong, but to? Those who endure to the end. He's saying to Joshua, I need you to be endure have endurance. I need you to be strong. I need you to be focused. And I need you not to waver. Be strong and be courageous. Now, why do we need to be courageous? We already covered strong. Now, why do we need to be courageous? That again? Something he hasn't gone through before. Absolutely, is more. Keep going. She's on the right track. Just piggyback. No? Because you'll be challenged. Because it's something new that you haven't done before. And whenever you're called to do something that you haven't done before, you're challenged. I have business partners. You're sitting here. When I start coming to you with how to deal with finance, you all look at me like my head is on backwards. It always becomes a challenge, even when if you're broke and I got a pocket full of money. It's still a challenge. And I'm like, I'm telling you how I, why I have a pocket full of money. Like, I'm, I'm telling you, but that's not the way I usually do it. And your pockets look like what? <laughs> but it's what you're used to. It's what you know. Even if it doesn't work, it works because it works to keep you surviving in the way that you've been surviving. And I'm like, but I don't survive. Like to, to I said, Shell, I don't speak broke. I don't, I don't know that word. That's, that word is, that's a cuss. That's a curse word. I don't, ugh. He's being challenged to go somewhere and do something that he has not done. Think about this. He's just been an a servant, an assistant to Moses all this time. And now 40 years later, he's made president of the company and he didn't even run for election. He didn't try to get in office. He was just put there. And God just shows him, guess what? You the man now. And guess what? As long as they've been talking about Moses so fondly, you now got to take his place. And guess what? I don't even want you doing it like he did it. Now, you're going to come to them and break their traditions. You're going to take some people off. You're about to change the whole game. And you're going to stand in front of the people and tell them, guess what? I'm new Moses. I'm your leader now. Now, we're a small church. A matter of somebody walk up in here tomorrow and just step in front and say, guess what, I'm your pastor now. They'll be like, excuse me? <laughs> and then let them start teaching suffering. <laughs> See? <laughs> you, 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 you follow what I'm saying? Here's somebody going to come and he's going to take over. And Moses is dead. We're not doing Moses. We're not marching around the promise anymore. We're going in. Come on. Come on. You've got the same past I'm saying it to you and you're having problems with it. We're not marching around anymore. We're going in. So now you have to be strong. You have to be courageous. That means your courage can't faint when you're opposed. Don't look down. 
Your courage can't faint when you're opposed. If you're believing for healing and then your body says the next morning you're not, your courage can't faint. If you believe for God to make a way for you and prosper you, you can't when everything goes your way. There was one place, which I didn't mention, that we found when we were looking for apartments, and it was perfect. Nellie loved it. I was like, this is perfect for you. It was the location, everything about it. We were just so happy. We, she, we just knew she had it. It was on. We did a little Holy Ghost dance and all of that, and then it didn't happen. And I was like, okay, so? You ain't going to get down, are you? We're going to keep looking, right? You ain't going to sit down and lick wounds and stuff. We ain't got time for that. And I could tell you were getting a little discouraged. And I was like, hey, it happens. Keep moving. Look at the next one. That wasn't the last, I think it was the last and best thing. The place she got is twice the size of that place. There you have it. So, it, it, but at the moment, it was like, oh, my God. I thought this Jesus. Where are you, Lord? <laughs> I'm over here at the one that I'm getting ready for you. <laughs> I just told you to look. I didn't tell you to, you know, you know, get too excited about anything. I just told you to keep looking and be strong and courageous. It's easy, saints. Just don't fail. Just don't quit. If you listen to all the richest people in the world when they talk, you know they always say, I've been watching a lot of them and reading their little books and going online and looking at their videos. They always say, just don't give up. They always say it. They all say that. That's why I say they got more sense than the church. Never give up. If you keep going, eventually it's going to happen. Now, I kept going for a whole two years. Man. I, <laughs> <laughs> I kept going. Okay. So that's it. That was your limit. Two years. They had to wait 40. I would make a decision that the promise of God is mine and what he said is mine, is mine no matter how long it takes. Now, let me just qualify that. Well, I was believing I was supposed to have this. I was believing I was supposed to be a singer. I believe I was supposed to be a actor, and I believe I was supposed to be a model, and I believe I was supposed to have this, and I believe God told me I was going to have this, that, 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 that. Okay, let me just stop you. Okay? Okay? You listening? Got your attention? Can we just leave those out the picture for a minute? What did you just say? I, I don't want to hear what you heard from God. I don't want to hear the word that you say God spoke over you that you're going to be the queen of the mountain and all this in the word that was prophesied over you. I don't even, let's, let's, even want to hear that right now. Let's just throw that out. If we throw that out and just stand on the basic word, he supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory, that I've been old, young and now I'll never see the righteous forsaken the seed, bacon, bread. Can we just first, before we start trying to get off of that, can we get you to eat, eat every week without a struggle? and pay your bills, there's enough general promises that you can stand on that would make you very wealthy, blessed going in and blessed coming out, and every place that you sold your feet land, that I will give you, all that stuff. You don't need no prophetic word to say, well, I stood on that, it didn't work. Stand on the basic one then. Go back to the ABCs of standing. What is wrong with the church? I put all that other stuff and then found it on them later and said, let me make sure I got this part right. So supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. I don't need a prophet to speak nothing over me. That's right there. And that goes to everybody. Well, God spoke that over you, Pastor. He spoke this much over all of y'all. Resist the devil and he will flee. That goes to everybody. How much fleeing is he doing with you? Giving it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. Show men given to your bosom. How many of you have it pressed down, shaking together and running over yet? 
Don't keep telling me what the word you, some prophet spoke over you. I'm not saying that that's bad. I'm just saying there's some fundamental stuff that we can just be riding. If we get that, life would be phenomenal. Are you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, but I believe God spoke to me in a vision. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you have the foundation stuff yet? Well, how are you going to be trying to believe God for kingdoms and lands and stuff, and you can't even believe God for monthly rent? <sighs> this is not typical stuff you hear in church, but it needs to be. There's enough good and precious promises in there that if you could just get a hold of ten of those, your life would be straight forever. Now we can go build big kingdoms in the clouds. Let's get a roof and an income and enough blessing from whatever God has called you to do that you can now begin to give so it can be given unto you without feeling like you're breaking your neck to give. Basic facts. So he's telling them, I need you to be strong. And I'm going to wrap up here. I need you to be strong. I need you to be courageous. So strong and courageous is that I'm not going to be moved in my insides by anything that seems to go against what me and God have set forward to do. How many of you have stepped forward to do things you believe God has called you to do? How many of you have been challenged in those things? Each and every person, that's correct. How many of you have been tempted to quit after s- several challenges of things? <laughs> See? G- listen, it is what it is. Be strong and courageous means I'm not moved by that. I'm not moved by that. I'm sure when Joseph was sitting in jail for all these years for a crime he didn't commit, I try to think of Joseph's story. He's a kid. He tells his stories, his brothers throw him away, sell him into slavery. By the time his father and his brother come and bow at his feet, he's a grown man with kids. Daddy's old and not too far from passing away because the brother said that. Please don't keep our younger brother because our father doesn't have many years. This would kill him for sure. So how many years... Did Joseph have to wait and stand his ground? And during that period of time, even though it's not recorded, did Joseph faint at times? I'm sure he did. And I'm sure he did. You say, no, I'm sure. He's human. These are not superheroes. These are not storybook characters. They're people. He woke up some of the mornings in his jail cell and was like, this whole she bow and crap, I wish I had never spoken. I was grown up with my brothers and had a good time. We'd have been running around doing what brothers do. And I had to go ahead and share my vision, and my brothers threw me away, and now here I am in some foreign jail that I could have just not been in if I just kept my mouth shut. Of course he felt like that. You don't think he felt like that? Jesus did. That's Jesus. You telling me he did and, and he didn't and, and Joseph didn't? Jesus said, if there be any other way, take this cup from me. Jesus wanted to tap out. Like, this is a little too much. I'm coming here trying to love these people and show them the way salvation. They're trying to kill me. You know what? <laughs> Jesus probably was like, Father, just let them all go to hell. Just whatever. <laughs> You know, I don't need to put up with all of this. But he caught himself, and he was strong and courageous and said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. That's all courage requires. Not my will, Father, your will be done. I figured it all out. My doctors then told me all the remedies that I have to take and things I need to do for the rest of my life. Not my will, not their will. Your will be done. 
That's it. Simple direction. Simple, simple focus. God, I'm going to trust you. And I'm going to lean on what you say, even though everything in me says no. Even though the fear inside of me screams, run. I'm going to stand. I'm not going to move. I'm going to hold my ground. And like I said, I know you want to talk about the things that God spoke over you, but can we just go to square one? Let's just get the word open and find the promises that are written specifically to everyone, and let's see those work. If you find the scripture says that your boat should sail and not sink, let's get a boat. You know, let's start (laughs) with the simple stuff of the word. The word's promises. Everybody wants to go to hear somebody prophesy some deep, heavy spiritual word over them when they have not yet laid the foundation of the original word or the root word to even hold them up. And even if those prophecies that they spoke of you came to pass and you got everything you believe for, you would lose every bit of it because you don't have the foundation to stand on it. House built on the same. God spoke I would have this thing, okay, and what happened? And I got it, and what happened? And the devil came in and took it. But God spoke it. What what happened? Don't put the, don't put the, you didn't take the time to develop the footing that you needed to be secure when God gave you what he promised you. You did not prepare, which is what he told him to do. Get up and prepare. And then once you prepare, then be strong and don't move. You don't shake about nothing that you prepared for. You don't take a test and worry about it if you know you studied and you know your stuff. And know your stuff. So I'm leaving you with this today. Be strong. It's not physical strength. It's not emotional strength. It's not gritting your teeth. I'm strong. I'm strong. I'm strong. I'm strong. Strong comes from just what you know to be true and you stand on it. And no matter what your insides say, no matter what situations say, you don't move. And listen to me. If you stand there long enough, you will see the arrival of your package. It always shows up. I'm going to throw this in as a little joke as I end. This generation is lazy. (laughs) You have been taught not to stand. If we send a letter, we didn't know when it was coming. You all got tracking. (laughs) (laughs) If we was hungry, you had to figure out how to cook. You had to boil the water, warm up the grease. There was no microwave. The closest thing to a microwave we had was TV dinners, and you still had to turn the oven on and put that sucker in there and wait an hour and a half for it to cook. I have a long time. <laughs> there was no one-minute meals. We've been spoiled that we don't even trust our instincts with God anymore. I know I've traveled from here to Alabama to Atlanta, Georgia, and back with nothing but my memory. Now I can't go to New Jersey without putting on Google Maps. (laughs) A couple of times I put foot on, I'm like, dude, why are you putting this on? You know once you see this highway how to get home. Why are you doing this? We've been conditioned to not listen to his voice or to trust what we know, but to be led by convenience. And convenience takes away courage because you don't have to stand. So let's, hmm, hmm. So let us, Pay attention to courage and strength. It's just being able to trust when it looks like there's nothing to trust and all you've got to anchor yourself to is what his word said to you. And you stand your ground and you don't move. That's all you got. It don't feel right. Nobody asked you what it felt. 
He told you where to stand. He told you where to stand. Stand there. I said this last week, and I'll say it again. No, a couple of weeks ago, I said, pick one thing, one thing that you know that you're weak in, and just find your word and stand on that until it's so deep in your spirit that not even the enemy can touch it. And it can happen. And I gave the example, salvation. With all your mistakes and flaws, you know salvation is yours through Jesus Christ, and nobody can touch that. Well, you can get that way with provision. You can get that way with healing. You can get that way with everything else that the Bible promises. But you got to stand on that and stand on that and stand on that and stand on that till you don't see it any other way. And once you do it, it'll go into autopilot. Then build the next level. And that's how you become strong. That's how you become strong. Then you won't move. You won't be discouraged. You won't waver. Amen.